Hi, and in this video I'm going to be giving you a complete walkthrough of all of the on-screen setup and options within the TX RZ810. And let's get straight into it. The first options we have is for the input output and setting up the on-screen display and the TV monitor out. Now the HDMI out option allows us to select whether we want to use the main or the sub output or whether we in fact we want to set them both to on to output the same signal at the same time. We can also tell the AVR whether we want to upscale 1080p signals to 4K. But to be honest I would recommend this to be done in the TV set itself. I only say this because normally with the 4K or UHD TVs the processing power is more power than there is within an AV receiver irrespective of brand. Now one of the new features the 810 has is you can actually select zone 2 HDMI but this does mean if you actually select zone 2 HDMI then it's fixed for that particular job you can't then use it as a sub output as well with the on-screen display it actually comes in many many languages as you can see on screen depending which location you're in and you get the option to superimpose the AVR's graphics over the top of the image that you're watching or not and also the screen saver can be adjusted up and down as to save your screen if you're still running a plasma screen or something susceptible to screen burn now the hdmi input is pretty self-explanatory but what we have actually done is included in on the labeling of hdmi 1 through to 3 and actually shows you it supports hdcp 2.2 now if you actually have any legacy devices we've catered for that on the video input and we've given you the option to assign any of the components or any of the composite video inputs to any of the label input buttons for the front and there's the same principle for the digital audio inputs you can actually assign either the coaxials or the opticals to any of the inputs on the front of the actual unit this allows you to use your blu-ray um, for example as a cd player on another input so same source device two separate inputs to do two different jobs and then lastly we've got the analog inputs which follow again the same train you can assign any of the analog audio inputs to any of the physical labels just be aware that the phono input is actually a dedicated turntable input and set up for moving magnet only the speaker option is going to give you everything you need to be able to set up properly and configure all of your speakers within your system so first up is the actual configuration menu and in here this actually determines the actual physical setup of how many speakers you have within the room now because of the amount of options available I'm just going to hit the fast forward button so you can see them all as quickly as possible Now in the crossover section you do have the ability to select the THX crossover point which happens to be 80 Hz or alternatively you can actually run your speakers at any frequency crossover that you want from full band all the way through to THX certification. The distance setting does exactly what it says on the tin it allows you to adjust individually for time alignment all of the distance from the seat position to each individual speaker and this can be done in either meters or feet. The level calibration allows you to adjust individually each speaker when you're using a calibrated sound pressure level meter. If you've used the auto setup feature in the beginning then you shouldn't really need to play around with this but the option is there for you if you actually want to do it. Now within the equalizer settings we've actually given you three presets. Now what these presets enable you to do is adjust the sound profile of what you're listening to and store it and then you can actually do this on each of the individual channels if you're a bit of a hobbyist and you actually want to set up the room acoustics correctly this is where you're going to play around now you can adjust 9 out of the 15 bands and you've got a plus and minus 6 dB shift on each band across all of the speakers just be aware that if you are going to do this it's probably best that you get some good quality equipment which you can with things like an ipad or a pc or the other alternative is just let the auto mic system to do it all for you but now you actually have a way of manually calibrating the audio within the room 
Now within the THX audio options there are a couple of settings which are specific to the THX post processing. The surround back speaker placing is quite explanatory, it's the distance between the left and right. Now the Ultra 2 subwoofer is related to whether the sub can actually reach down to 20 hertz with a flat response, which most modern subwoofers can actually do nowadays. So unless you've got a very, very old subwoofer, I would recommend going into this menu and actually turning the option to yes. This will make sure the system plays all the way down to 20 hertz. So not only will you hear it, you will feel it as well. The BGC option, which is boundary gain compensation, is sort of less needed now because of the auto room mic setups that we have. But if you're not using the auto room setup, then I would recommend you use the BGC because it removes the artificial hump that you actually get when you put a subwoofer in a corner of a room or along a wall. The loudness plus option artificially adjusts the lower frequencies so you get a nice rich deep bass at lower volumes. And that wraps up the THX audio specific settings. The audio adjust options give you direct control over the incoming signal and how you'd like to listen to it. So here we've got a specific configuration for mono and we can tell the AVR whether we want to look at the main, the left or the right channels, how you want the signal to be processed and then which speaker you want the mono soundtrack to be outputted at. The Dolby option is there purely for bass management. It's like a loudness control where it reduces the amount of bass for, let's say, listening late at night. The LFE level does exactly what it says in the tin. It can actually reduce the incoming LFE by 10 or 20 dB in 10 dB steps. And finally, we have the volume option. Now this gives you a couple of good things that you can do. Firstly is actually setting the volume display is either absolute, which is zero to plus 80 dB or relative. Now the relative is associated with the THX reference level, which is zero. So you work in minus numbers working up to zero. The muting level has got three settings, either off completely, minus 40 or minus 20 dB. Maximum volume feature is really good because what it enables you to do is to preset the maximum output of your system. Once this is set, you know that your system is completely safe. The power on option allows you to set the state of the switch on volume. So what it was last at or predetermined, it's the same volume every single time. That way, if someone else has used the system, when you turn it on, you don't get the fright of your life. And then lastly is the headphone level. This is all adjustable relative to the main volume level. So you can decrease it or increase it. In the source setup, first up, we have the Intelli volume. Now this is available on each individual input and what it enables you to do is to adjust the internal volume running into the AVR. So then that way when you switch between inputs all of the inputs can have the same relative volume. The name edit options, self-explanatory, you can use the keyboard and actually rename any and all of the inputs to anything that you want. The audio select is specific to each individual input, so you need to go into this menu and actually select whether you want to use HDMI, a digital or an analog connection. And then that will actually tell the amplifier and force it to look at that particular place and that place only. And now we're on to the hardware side of things and first up will be the HDMI settings. Here is where we can turn the CEC on and off. We've also got flexibility to have it as fully automated, as manual as you want. We've got flexibility on HDMI pass-through and the audio return channel. Again, we can automate this by having everything turned on, or alternatively, we can switch everything off and have it as a very, very manual system. Flexibility is directly related to the TV or projector it's being plugged into. As you'd expect with the TX-RZ810, the networking features are quite extensive. Now as we're running here, it's on wired, but I've just opened up the actual Wi-Fi wireless part of it to actually show you what we can do. There's an automated system where it will go off and actually find the networks for you, or alternatively you can manually put in the SSID and password and it will actually jump onto the specific network you require. 
You can also enable or disable the DHCP, that way you can set the AVR up to fit into your network exactly the way you want it to do. You can also change the name of the AVR in the friendly name section, and then below that we actually have the AirPlay password. Now you'll need to set this up before you can activate AirPlay, but I have done a whole video on just AirPlay itself and how to use it. And when that's all set up, you can actually use the feature right at the bottom and actually check to make sure the whole network is running the way you want it to. The Bluetooth menu is actually just really simple. You don't have to touch any part of it at all because it's all in auto mode. The only thing you might want to do is check the status and change the pairing information and clear it. That's about it. Within the power management, we've got an auto standby, a sleep timer, a USB out at standby, which means you can charge your devices while the unit's actually off, a network standby, which means you can actually still provide commands via the app or an IP based control system. And you can actually wake the AVR up via Bluetooth or streaming music. Now with the 12 volt trigger option, this allows you to trigger with 12 volts another device or piece of equipment and you can actually select this so when you turn the main amp on it will trigger or you can set it to zone 2 if you've got an amplifier there that needs the power command or zone 3 just increases the flexibility for you. The multi-zone menu gives you a couple of specific options so you can configure zone 2 and zone 3 so they switch on in a particular way. You can either have a fixed or variable output. So for example, if you had an integrated amplifier in zone 2, you would want a fixed output because you'd be controlling the actual volume locally in that second route. And as you can see on screen, zone 3 has exactly the same options as zone 2. And then finally, we're in the miscellaneous menu. The first option allows you to change the tuner steps, either 9 or 10 kilohertz. Remote ID allows you to run multiple AVRs in the same room without all the commands getting mixed up between each unit. There's a few options within the firmware update. You can enable the notice to tell you when there's an update, or alternatively, you can use the network or USB update procedure. The initial setup option is what you would have seen when you first unpack the unit and you can go through every single option and set it up as if it had just come straight from the box and then lastly we actually have the lock this doesn't stop anyone from going into the menu and unlocking it and changing any system settings but what it does it stops accidental changes hope you enjoyed watching this take care and i'll see you soon bye bye